Africa is blessed with so many beautiful cultures, intelligent people, abundance of natural resources. Yet, Africa remains in economic slavery to the US dollars. Many presidents of African countries have been speaking up, they have been speaking out against this economic slavery to the US dollars. As of recent, the Kenyan president, William Ruto, spoke against it. Let's sit back and watch. From Djibouti, selling to Kenya, or traders from Kenya selling to Djibouti, have to look for US dollars. How is US dollars part of the trade between Djibouti and Kenya? Why? Hmm. Think Africa, think. And we are saying that today, Afri Exim Bank have given us a mechanism where traders in our continent can trade in their goods and services and the Africa Exim Bank will settle payments in local currency. That is why Kenya champions the Pan-African Payment and Settlement System that is done by our own institution, the Afriexim Bank. Why, members, why is it necessary for us to buy things from Djibouti and pay in dollars? Why? There is no reason. And we are not against the US dollar. We just want to trade much more freely. Let us pay in US dollars what we are buying from the US. But what we are buying from Djibouti, let's use local currency. You were speaking on the dollar to other African currency free trade. That why do Africans need dollar to trade in their own domain? Like, yeah. It's, it doesn't make sense yeah. that you want to do something in your own house. Okay, you want to do something in your own house. You need your neighbor. You need to go and ask your neighbor. I want to I want to sleep. Oh. I want to peace. I want to shit. I want to cook. You need to ask your neighbor yeah, first. Yeah. So it does what William Ruto, the Kenyan president, is saying that yeah. if we want to trade in Africa, we should use African currency. Yeah. That's true. You understand? Yeah. If we want to trade in US or with the US, that is when we should use US dollars. Yeah. Not when you are trading within your country. Yes. Within African to African country. You're using another other country's currency. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's economic slavery, yeah. actually. Uh, there was a presidential candidate in Nigeria that talked about this economic slavery. Yeah. You know, when your production does not equal your uh, consumption, yeah. you will rely on other people's production to balance your consumption. I think the person you're talking about is Pito. Pito, yes. <laughs> I've listened to him severally. Yes, I've listened to him severally also. You know, you don't, you, you don't balance your production, your consumption by borrowing from other people's production and not working on your own uh, production. Yeah. You understand? That makes you a slave to demand you are getting your product from. Exactly. You are trading with him in foreign trade, foreign exchange. So you must trade in his currency because he is the one supporting your economy, so to say. It's as if you are making your currency to be to be dependent, dependent on their own currency, on their own instead currency. of dependent on your own natural resources. Resources. So what yeah. happens is that the Naira depreciates in value. Why not? Because what is the Naira producing? Nothing. Recently we have we had Dangote refinery. Mm -hmm. Refinery. That's the the refinery now that we are hoping will be producing. Crude oil, crude oil, refined crude oil. Yeah. You know, before we export crude oil and import refined 
cooked, yeah. refined oil, yeah. the PMS, mm -hmm. yes, premium motor spirit and other of its constituents. Yeah. You know, so when we have like five refineries, that means we are producing our own PMS and other constituents of the petroleum. Yeah. What happens is that we are exporting to Niger, we are exporting to Chad, we are exporting to Ghana, we are exporting to Togo, we are exporting to Cameroon and all our neighboring countries. If we are exporting to them, they will pay us in Naira. Yes, giving value to Giving the more value, value to the Naira as a currency. We don't have to trade in US dollars with them. That is what William Ruto of Kenya is saying. That we should produce as Africans. We have the resources. But, 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 but why do Africans have this consumer's mentality? Even their leaders. You hardly see an African nation actually producing something. The majority of them are consuming, consuming, consuming. Why do you think it's so? There are a lot of factors. Mm -hmm that brings about this consumer mentality. Yeah. First of all, it goes to the mind, developing the mind, to be able to say to yourself, I can do this. Yeah. You know, Nigeria, for instance, that is the African country that I am from and that I know much about. Yeah. Nigeria used to be a powerhouse of agriculture. We had the Kano, the Kano Bida Pyramid, Granite Pyramid in Kano, the, here in the southeast and south south we have palm oil, and in, in the west we have cocoa, cocoa house, yeah. and all those things all around. Yeah. They used to be the mainstay of the economy, you know, without oil. But when we discovered oil, the cocoa house, everything fell apart. Granite pyramids of Kano were nowhere to be found, they just disappeared. The palm oil production in the south, south, and southeast just depreciated. You know, do you know that uh, Singapore got their palm kernels, the sample, their specimens from Africa, from Nigeria also? Now that, and they are a developing economy. They have even developed to some extent yeah, and left us behind. Yeah. We that have everything that it takes. What causes this is easy way, looking for an easy way out. Yeah, exactly. We thought that petroleum or oil is an easy way out. There was a time we just want instant classification. Instant, we just want it now. Instant bloom. Yeah. We had that bloom during Yakubu Gowon's era. Yeah. He said that we had so much money that we don't know what to do with it. How oh, nah, they are not losing the money. Yes. <laughs> you know the first oil was discovered in Oloibiri, okay. in the Niger Delta area. Okay. Before independence even. So when we got the independence, the exploration become, became full time. Yeah. So we were just sucking the oil and other economic sectors were left to just die away. Okay. Yes, so this is what has happened to us. Now, do you think this mentality also, uh, also enters even the church? Because uh, I've been thinking as, as of late, why can't churches actually start building industries, companies, firms, organizations that will employ people. Instead of always praying for work, always praying for jobs, always praying for miracle work, miracle this, why can't they actually start creating jobs instead of praying for jobs? Like, it's as if even the church have this consumer mentality. Like, why, do, why do, you, do you think the churches can actually do better, go beyond praying for jobs and start creating one? Well, 